You're listening to the Visionary Lifestyle Podcast, the show that's dedicated to raising consciousness and empowering you to activate your highest potential. I'm your host, Magda Freedom Rod. Greetings, Rainbow Warriors. I'm coming to you today from beautiful Bali, Indonesia. And I'm wishing you a happy Samhain. If you're not familiar with this special day, listen up. Samhain involves the celebration and festival of death and transformation. It occurs in late October and early November and is most popularly known as Halloween. Sometimes as All Hallows Eve, All Saints and All Souls, including the Day of the Dead. This is also a celebration for the new year and other practices of the world. Like many cultures, celebrating the new year is a time for letting go of the old and looking ahead to the new. It marks the end of the harvest season. This is prime time for transformation, guys. It's like the beginning of winter. We're halfway between the two equinoxes, the fall and the spring. And it's a time to go inside and do your work, your inner work. It's also said that the veil is thinner at this time, giving us access to our dearly departed loved ones. So, beloveds, if it resonates with you, light a candle tonight and invite a connection with someone you love who passed on to the other side. And one more quick announcement. I have just a couple of spots left for the 30-day Visionary Activation Challenge that I announced all over my social media this week. If you're not paying attention, go look at all my accounts. I'm calling in a couple women. I think I have two spots left who are motivated to activate their highest potential to work directly with me over the course of 30 days. I'm offering this program at a ridiculously low introductory price just through the end of this year. So schedule a quick call with me if you want to learn more about it. Just go to my services tab on my website. That's visionary-lifestyle.com or check the show notes for a link directly to all that info about the program. Guys, this is basically like having me to yourself for a month so I can share all my activation secrets from my toolkit with you through a custom tailored plan that will support your unique needs, challenges, and goals. This is a one-time offer at this price. So if this is resonating, get a message to me or get a call scheduled with me right away. So now on to today's show. Our guest today is Krishnamurthy Mohan Raj. He's a yoga instructor and the founder and director of Namaste Mysore Yoga Culture Communication Center in China. He's influenced by traditional yoga culture in his teaching style, focusing on the detailed journey of yoga culture and vinyasa. Krishnamurthy started practicing yoga at an early age under the guidance of his mother and brother. His practice moved into its next deeper level when he started teaching yoga at the age of 14 in his birthplace of Mysore, India. In 2005, he got the opportunity to promote yoga in China and off he went and has been there ever since. He's now based in China, focusing on his workshops and the promotion of yoga culture, encouraging his students to not only practice yoga, but to feel the magic of yoga. Such a cool guy. I met him at the International Yoga Festival in 2017. And finally, we got to sit down and have this chat a full year later again at the International Yoga Festival. We enjoyed a great conversation about many aspects of yoga. I think you'll really find some inspiration in this one, guys. Krishnamurthy has a really interesting story and a real passion for true yoga. Make sure to check the show notes on visionary-lifestyle.com for links to his website. Enjoy and namaste. Krishnamurthy Mohan Raj, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. (laughs) Yeah, it's nice to be here again with you this year at the International Yoga Festival. Uh, It's the second year I've seen you here teaching a bunch of classes. Yes. And I'm, I'm very intrigued with the work that you're doing. The last 15 years you've been living in China, yes. teaching yoga. Yes. What is that like? Uh, I was, I've been to uh, China in 2005 around. Uh, I've been to do a workshop. Then slowly I started, the, my students, they liked my class. They invited me to stay there. Mm. And uh, 
from last six years, I'm running my own yoga center called Namaste Mysore Yoga in China. Namaste Mysore Yoga. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. And that, so you're from Mysore? Yeah, I'm from Mysore. I'm, I'm born in Mysore, but brought up in Bangalore. Wow. Okay. Okay. So an Indian in China. It's got to <laughs> be really interesting there, huh? <laughs> so all your students are Chinese? Or you uh, have a no, mix? No, no. I, I have some Indian students and foreign students also, but 90% of them are Chinese. Wow. So how do you see the yoga movement evolving in China? Is it very popular? Is yeah, it? very popular. So many people, they love it. Yeah. yeah. And why do you think that is? What is it that they're responding to or looking for? Because Chinese first thing, they'll go for asana practice. Mm -hmm. But some of the teachers, like we have some good teachers, like uh, who is really responsibility to tell them it's, yoga is not only asanas. There's some good teachers, mm -hmm. but still they go first for physical exercise. Yeah. That's what attracts them. Yeah, they, they don't need to lift a weight or something that and they can practice yoga on the mat. And it's easy, easy for ladies. So a lot of yoga for ladies only too much in China. Mm. Men are very less, they go to yoga. Mm -hmm. But nowadays they're improving. Yeah, so men are coming, more men are coming yeah, now? Yeah, it's getting, better. getting yeah, better. Slowly but yeah. surely. Yeah. yeah, the women lead, right? And <laughs> yes, the men follow. Yes, That's yes, what yes, we see right. very often. Women's first. Yeah. <laughs> and then they lead the men, the men follow the women. Yeah. Well, whatever it takes to get everybody doing yoga, right? I good, mean, good, as many good. people as possible. So you just mentioned um, yoga beyond the asana. So they yeah. come for asana, but as we both know, yeah. yoga is much more than the asana. Yes. So tell, tell us more. What, what does yoga mean to you? Mm, for me, now it's my life. Like uh, I already dedicated for this. I started with yoga at a very small age, and uh, now I'm almost 35. Still, I'm single, and I'm just keep on doing yoga practice every day, and I'm teaching for my students. I'm serving yoga really. And uh, see, I have a lot of tensions because I should do management also in my company. Management. Uh -huh. Management of workers, everything. I manage mm -hmm. everything. But when I enter to the classroom. I'll forget everything. Maybe mm -hmm. I had some big problem, big issue outside. If I enter to the classroom, that's it. Yeah. Nothing comes to mind. I'll go to something like heaven and I'll feel mm -hmm. that one and a half an hour, I'll be so happy. And my students also never feel, oh, he's the guy who was shouting outside. <laughs> Suddenly it changed. Uh, this happens for me. This is yeah. like, for me completely, it's my life. Mm -hmm. It's controlled my uh, ahankara. Uh, it's controlled my ego. Mm. And it's given me a lot of good, to take a good decisions. Like, it's keep my mind very pure and mm -hmm. very relaxed mm -hmm. and a uh, lot of in spiritual path I'm going. Yeah. It's beautiful. many things for me, like my mother. What? A, oh, yoga is like your mother? You yes, mean? yes. <laughs> it's teaching me many things now. She guides you. Yes, right? because she my mother guided you. me to, uh, my brother, my brother guided to me to do yoga. Mm -hmm. Then slowly now, <laughs> yoga is guiding me in, in many things. Right, of course. Uh, yeah, that was another question I wanted to ask you is how did you start yoga? I mean, you grew up in India, so yes. in Mysore and Bangalore, I don't know what age no, in, you started in, at. In Mysore, I was staying there when I started yoga. At uh, that time, I was like around proper yoga around 11 or something like wow. that. Wow. But started it at the age of 6. Oh. But proper yoga, like what I know, like what I'm doing, I know I, it came at the age of 11. That's incredible. Yes. And I was, out of 15, I started teaching also. Really? At age 15? <laughs> yes. I don't have RYT certificates, but oh. still, <laughs> I started teaching at that time. Wow, that's incredible. Who did you teach? I teach a lot of diabetes patients and oh. uh, blood pressure patients. I was taking free classes and I started coming some Western students to my class and sitting and that time my English was not that good. Uh huh. Then, then slowly it has been grown up like this. Wow, so I guess at that age you were discovering that this was going yeah, to be like your path, huh? They were 17, 8, oh, sorry, 70, 80 years old guys and I am just around, around 15. 15. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Different. So did you did you know clearly at that point that you, that's what uh, you wanted I to should do? Not, I should not tell that uh, I know that because this, that was the time uh, I really, I don't have my father at that time. I really want to, uh, it's the truth. I really want to earn some money and I don't want to give burden to my mom. Uh -huh. I want to use my money to myself, my studies or my, uh, my So food. it was a means to support yourself? Yes, my support myself. Uh -huh. Then age of uh, 19, I've been to China. From 21, I'm really become a, I am not, I should not tell a yogi. I've, I've been to a spiritual spa mm -hmm. at age of 21. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Whew. I, it's incredible. So you, you've been teaching in China for 15 years yeah. and now you travel, you're traveling the world, teaching at different festivals and I teach places. festivals like, uh, I come every year, it's my 10th year to Rishikesh, but 6th uh, year I'm teaching here. Okay. So it's going good. Mm -hmm. 
I go around and I do yoga festivals. I bring a lot of good teachers to China yeah. and show them real yoga, what is real yoga. So and, w- and what is real yoga? Uh, especially for Chinese, they need, they don't have, uh, how to say, they don't have, they don't believe in a God. Mm-hmm. Like for me, God is here. God is sky. Mm. So it does not mean God is look like Ganesha means like he have a big elephant mouth or something <laughs> like that. I don't know if he look like that or not. Mm-hmm. But I see in everywhere God. And I'm trying to tell them yoga is, have a lot of good things which you should not only dedicated only for asana practice. Mm-hmm. So I'm bringing good teachers. Recently uh, from USA I got, called a teacher called Den Nevins mm-hmm. who lost his two legs in Ira- Iraq wow. in 2004. And he's a military guy, army guy. Then yeah. he came to, he started his yoga path. He teached in White House also wow. in Washington DC. He first time came to Asia. So I invited him to China. Be- because of not his yoga practice, I called him because of his spirit. Yeah. What he's doing is, is unique. Mm-hmm. And I, I told, I bring a lot of students and told them, see, if he can practice yoga, why don't you can? Do? Yeah, wow. You are sitting and wasting your time every day. Mm-hmm. You can practice many things. It gives you purity in yourself. Mm-hmm. And you know how to help others, what others need. If yeah. you come to earth, you should not always think about you. Mm-hmm. We should do something, we should give something to earth and we should leave this place. Right. This is my my yoga style. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that. that you're, what you're talking about is like the union, right? Because yes. yoga, as we know, means union, yes. right? So we, we do the practice to purify ourselves, yes. right? And get ourselves totally balanced and grounded yes. and yes. healthy, right? right? Healthy body, mind and spirit. Yes. And then once we we have our own, excuse my French, shit together, <laughs> you know, personally, right? Um, then we have enough to give and to share and to help, right? Yes, and this yeah, is yeah. part of the spirit of yoga as well, yes. right? Because union, not only between ourselves and our higher self, but union between each other yes. and the animals and the environment and the planet yes. and all of it, right? We should take care of this place. We should take care of this earth. Yeah. It's a gift. So we are all here. We should try to save. Yeah. So uh, it's my one small part. I'm doing it. That's it. Yeah. Yes. I love that you're you're inspiring people in, into the yoga world in China. I yeah. love this. Um, and you, your style of teaching is uh, I haven't been able to take any of your classes, unfortunately yeah. yet. Yeah. So is it quite physical I and mean, quite hard with the asana? For some uh, reason, like, I picture yes, you like, having a quite yeah. intense asana. Asana practice, yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Because I always feel if you don't know to do asana practice a little bit then you cannot sit in a proper position, you cannot keep your spine straight. Then you cannot sit in a proper position, you cannot breathe properly. If you cannot breathe properly, you cannot go to the state of mind, of meditation mind, dhyana. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that asana practice also is very important. So I start with mantras mm. and slowly I'll bring him to for a meditation level, then slowly breathing, then we'll go for asana practice, then again chanting. But they'll feel the like whole package in my class. Mm. I teach vinyasa, yeah, follow okay. yoga. Okay. And so you're teaching mantra. I, I, I just want to be a fly on the wall in your class yeah, in China I, and see this. Please, anytime. See you singing I teach, mantra. My students, they sing so well. Yeah? My Chinese students, it's so hard for them, but still they are very interested. Yeah, and they embrace it, huh? Yes. Wow. In my teacher training, if you don't, you don't know Sanskrit names of asanas mm-hmm. and pranayamas, kriyas, you are not going to get a certificate. Right. Sorry right. for that. Right, right. And you're training teachers as well. Yes, yes. Huh? I, have, I have trained around 1,300 students or teacher training students wow. in China. Wow, and most of them are Chinese? Uh, almost are Chinese. Mm-hmm. So like uh, there will be a, um, some some of the Western. And the, do they stay and teach in China or they, they're traveling and teaching? Yeah, there are, some people are traveling. They're already, some people are very famous now. They do a lot of workshops. <laughs> and right. I'll go for a same festival and they'll see me and they'll be so happy. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a proud moment for me. Yeah, well, I Because imagine. my students, they're like my ch- kids, they're growing, you know? Sure, yes. sure, <laughs> yes, watching your kids yes. grow up. Yes. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, so what do you think resonated with, with you about yoga in the first place? Like, why do you think you started practicing? I started because of my health issue. I had a lot of cold happening on the age of very small. Oh. I have like very one month, I'll be have a cold. Mm. Uh, so I'll be always mm-hmm. sick. My mother told to my brother, to take him to practice. And slowly I went there. Mm. And uh, you know, like we really try to do some physical exercise, so started doing. And uh, after like age of nine, ten, my cold has been completely gone. Uh-huh. It's a normal now. So I think this is a good thing for me, and I started practicing yoga. Yeah. Slowly. But I was not in a competition or something like that. I was mm-hmm. just normal student who will sit in the last and practice myself. Yeah. And done. That's it. 
And you did it at that age. It's impressive that you yeah. actually stuck with it at that yes. age. Yes, you know? yes, yes, yes. There's a lot of other things yes. you could have been doing with your time. I was almost like a, a age of six only. A very, very, very physical exercise. I allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I love that your mother pointed you to it too, as yeah. well. Your mother. My mom and my brother. They are my like my backbone. Mm. I still love. I talk very less to my brother, mm -hmm. uh, but he's like for me a godfather. Oh. Like uh, after my father left us, like he's for me everything. Oh. And my sister-in-law and my we, ha we have a great wife, and uh, she's like my mom also. Yeah, they're all really good for me. And where are they? They're in Bangalore. Yeah, they're in Mysore. Oh, Mysore. My okay. mom also lives in Mysore. Nice. Okay, so you're still close. And, yeah. Yeah, but now I cannot. Unfortunately, I cannot go and see them because of uh, this yoga festival finished. I should go back to China. Yeah, you're going right back to start a teacher training. Yeah, because training, our students so. are here. Yeah. I should take them. Mm -hmm. It's for responsibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the way it's set up. How long is the flight from China to say Rishikesh If you come to Delhi? Delhi from Shanghai, it will take around seven to eight hours. Okay, it's that's not, not that, that far. It's not that far. It's almost like flying across yeah. the United but States. But you know, so. they are from not the Shanghai place. They they should also fly to other place. China oh. is too big. Okay. And you're also doing a festival there, right? Yes, called Mysore Yoga Heart Festival. And Mysore Yoga Culture Heart Festival. Okay. And this is once a year? Once a year. I already it was in 2016 and 2017, mm -hmm. in September 9 to 13. So this year maybe I'm planning for a big one. So I'm keep, skip this year and next year I'm going to plan. Okay. Uh, but this year the link will be coming out. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to bring a great teachers mm -hmm. uh, because China needs them. Yeah. They're not like uh, David Swanson, maybe uh, Kino McGregor. They're not only practitioners. Mm -hmm. They have some spiritual path also. Yeah. So I, I want to bring them, a good teachers to China and show them. See, they are do good asanas, but they are not sticking there. They are going up. They are growing like anything. Right. So, right. And different it. styles of yoga yeah, too, yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Right. So they can expand yeah, their everything. awareness about so what's available. Last year also we are trying to bring a Kundalini teacher. So mm -hmm. this year maybe it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So taking a break for 2018, 2019. Yeah, 19, yes. And we'll be back. But Anandra also were there. The, you know the lady called Anandra who is doing yes. the secret sounds. Yeah. She's she was coming. there. She was, oh, there, she was there, last there last year. year. Yes. Oh, nice. She was so happy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I want to come visit you in China yeah, and see, please, please. see the yoga scene yeah. going on there. But still, uh, the international market is not that much know about our festivals because of Facebook, Twitter, we don't use. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, because in yeah. China you don't they, have access yeah. to this. Yeah, they bl block everything. Uh -huh. Sometimes I'll use, but you know, I'm still not that familiar with the marketing thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It happens. <laughs> yeah, well, that's incredible that you're doing that. And so that's outside of Shanghai, that's an extra yeah. place Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Mm. Where we are doing yoga festival, it's a beautiful place. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. So back to the yoga. What's your what's your favorite thing about yoga? What the favorite thing is about yoga? <laughs> yoga is to have many things to say. It's your whole life, but yeah. I mean, what comes to mind? For me, uh, I love to say like the chanting is hmm. a great part to change my life. Hmm. What I'm today like the chanting is the main thing. I love oh. to chant. Hmm. And uh, yes, some people are really love to hear my voice also. <laughs> but still, I don't know how I'm singing, but still, I, I love chanting. Mm. If you tell me to sing a movie song or something, I don't know how to sing. Right. I, I don't know the raga tala, but when you're going to deep with uh, spiritual music, mm -hmm. I'll be loud to sing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. This is the main part for me, change everything. Mm -hmm. Not asana practice. I think this is the thing which getting me inside. But asana I was doing for a very long time. Right. So still but the main thing is I'm very uh, responsible of myself and what I'm doing see my students are here mm -hmm. so I don't want to go home to see my mom it's yeah. very nearby one flight from here mm -hmm. because of students if they have some problems I should solve it yeah so this is my responsibility yeah, they're this your is, kids yes they're this responsibility yeah. comes from yoga yeah mm. it's teaching me the path which you should take responsibility you should stand for it, everything yeah. Yeah. For good or bad, if you stand, you should stand. Then you should solve the problems. Mhm. Mm oh, beautiful. So, how did the chanting come about then? If you were doing asana at six to fifteen, and yeah, because uh, when did the chanting start? And and, in, and what happened when you started that? You said that was the thing that really pulled you in. What do you tell me more about that? I, I was like this. It picked me so easily in it. And uh, when I was in Mysore, uh, a lot of gurus they every evening they sing uh, chanting in a class. And every Wednesday they are giving some prasad, you know prasad. Yes. After the puja they will give prasad. Starting first day they sing some uh, Vigneshwara, like Ganesha's chanting. 
I was, it's so deep. I don't know the feeling. You, you cannot, right you away, cannot huh? tell that uh, yeah. feelings. You know, like it, it went inside directly. Mm. And from there, I, I was sitting every evening. I want to go there. Uh huh. He will call or not call. I'll go there with with myself, and I'll sit there and I will listen. And first first time when I song like sang us. Uh, chanting it was so horrible to listen my voice <laughs> and the guruji was seeing me like this what is doing but slowly i picked up i i still am, i practice every day i try to invent some new new mantras hmm. which helps me yeah so it's just something about the vibration really resonated yeah, with yes, you immediately yes, yeah, huh yeah. it's just wow this just is something like this, i want more of happened, yes yeah oh i love that I, yeah, I have a very different relationship with chanting and mantras. For I've resisted them for a very long time. Wow. And I would go to Kundalini classes and be like, no, I don't know what they're saying. This does, I feel awkward. I feel self-conscious. And then I finally, at like a bhakti festival, you know, Hare Krishna after yeah. an hour or something, I finally, it finally got through my resistance. And I went, ah, oh, my heart expanded. And I went, oh, there it is. That's what we're doing here. And now, now I love it. And now my mantra practice is growing and I'm learning more. And, but I, I definitely had to cut through the resistance, you know, and yes. I imagine for some people it, it's like this, especially as a Westerner and not understanding at all what they're saying. And yes. it's like, I feel like if I'm singing it and I don't understand what I'm saying, I'm affirming something that I don't even understand. And, you know, I was uncomfortable with that. But, um, but now I, I've, I've crossed through that threshold and now yeah. I understand the value of it. It takes some time, everything, but it comes. Yeah. Like it, for some people it comes very early, some, for some people it mm -hmm. comes late, but it comes. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I see it as part of the, the evolution of yoga, right? Yes. It's like yeah. some people they're attracted by the asana and they want the fitness yes. and they come for that and then and then there's a chant in the class and they go, oh, I like this too. And oh, we're going to meditate after class. And you know, that different pieces come in and, and their practice expands, yes. right? They may not even necessarily be looking for that, yes. but they find something they weren't even looking for, right? Yeah, right. So I like to say, sell them what they want and then give them what they need. Yes. You know? First you should go and talk to kids what they want. You should buy video games or something like that. Then slowly you should grab them to come in your path. Mm -hmm. You cannot directly go and tell, hey, you should do this, you should not do that. Right. Nobody can listen. This, yeah. now in this uh, generation is different. Yeah, you got to kind of entice them in yes. with, like, yeah, you can come get fit with yoga, yeah, you know, yeah. and then they come in the classroom and then it's almost, I, I sometimes I like to think of it as like the Trojan horse, you know, it's just like, we're, we're not not tricking them, but just over delivering. You yes. know, they come for one thing and they get way more. Everything is. You know, they get, like, yoga, as I see it, it's 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 a life path, right? It's it's a journey and it's a life path, and it's it, it's so much more obviously than a physical practice, but it's a way of being yes. in the world. Really. Right. So we look at the eight limbs, right? The yamas, the niyamas. I mean, we start there. Uh, I know. I remember very well. Sadhviji said something last year that if everybody just practice the first three yamas right that that we would have a world of peace you know if because that's true yoga right so yeah it, it takes some time really people need especially this generation they need some time mm -hmm. they are very used to it phones now like you if i don't have any work i never touch my phone mm. here also like internet or off the, off the internet i'm trying to control my my phone i'm not trying to uh, the robot things come and control me. Right. Because uh, I, li or I love the internet always. Because when I need, you can use it all. Mm -hmm. It's not no need of using and like mm -hmm. you cannot sleep good sleep. You are not you cannot eat good food because you should see some friends maybe send a like in a Facebook or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I don't do this all. You don't have this obsessive habit no. of looking at your phone constantly. I always tell them machines are made by humans. Humans. Mm -hmm or not made by machines so you should don't it. let it control yeah, you right yes. Yes. but i think a lot of people already the neck has been, been cervical neck has been become like this right like a duck <laughs> yeah 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 the neck is all compressed now because yeah. we're just looking yes. down at our yes. phone all the time yes it's true it's going to be interesting to see how humanity evolves right yes. with this whole technological advance and everything but the good news is that yoga is the answer and yoga is here, yes, right? I yes. mean, as I really see it, yoga is the answer to all the problems, both personal and global, yes. right? And the more people we can get onto the path of yes. yoga to be excited about it, even just to dip a toe in the water yeah. and then they get they get hooked, hopefully, right? And they're, yes. they It's they changing. Yoga is really changed. Mm. It's a big change for everyone. Mm -hmm. I think another 
few years, well, the whole world, around 60%, they'll start doing practicing yoga. Yeah. Maybe another 20 years, maybe the whole world is going to. Okay, yoga. let's hold that vision. Yeah. Visionary rainbow warriors. You heard that <laughs> yoga is going to take over the world, but it needs to. And and it the it is good that we see it expanding you know it's it's trendy right now yes, right yes. to be a yogi in all the new yoga studios and and for the most part especially in the western world i mean it, it is this this whole fitness kind of aspect you know but it's it doesn't really matter how they get into it right or yes. why they get into it just get into the class right just get your mat just get down on it you don't even have to have a mat you can do it right on the grass under the tree even better right doing it yes. with the earth yeah when we started practicing we just had us the floor with the cement floor cement floor. Uh, we got a lot of hurt. I injured my one thumb. It has been broken. I had 16 stitches in my mouth. Wow. And, uh, a lot of problems with my eyebrows. Because we Falling don't on the cement floor. Yeah, we, do, we don't have that time Lulu Lemon. Yeah. And, uh, we don't have cushy mats. Yeah, cushy mats and we, we don't have a wooden floor. No floor heater, nothing. <laughs> now it's coming everything. <laughs> wow. But still, we, learn, I huh? love enjoying that practice mm -hmm. because that time we had soul in it. Now everything we have, we don't have soul in it. Right. So I'm trying to, from my side, I'm trying to put some soul in my class. That's it. Oh. I cannot change everybody. I can change my circle. Right. Right. You do what you can. Yeah. Yes. You do what you it's can. It's my small part. Yeah. Oh, but it's a big part. I mean, to think that you've trained over a thousand teachers, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of love and yoga to put out into the world. <laughs> <laughs> Still, still, I have a long journey to do it. Yeah, well, you have plenty of time. You're, yeah. you're young. You, you have a beautiful <laughs> long life and train so many people yeah. and teach Hopefully, so many people. Hopefully, gives me a lot of strength to help others. Yeah. And I should help myself also. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, and this is what yoga does, yes. right? It's like we build ourselves up so that we have enough to yes, share, yes. right? And to deliver our gifts. Yeah. Yeah. I always think that. Uh, you should first. You should be very selfish on your health issues. Mm -hmm. You should be. You should love yourself. Yeah. Then only you have rights to love others. Yeah. If you don't love yourself, how come you can give share your love with your wife or your friends, or with your mother and father? Mm -hmm. Because you don't love yourself. Yeah. So first you should start loving yourself. Yeah. Then and only. Th and so when I, when I close my classes, I always tell you my students that, you know, to be grateful to yourself for showing up for this class yes. because practicing yoga is a tremendous act of self love. Great. Right? And this is where it has to start. You have to get yourself grounded, balanced, centered so that you can share what you came here to share. Because we all came here to share something, right? Yes, yes. We yes. all have gifts to deliver. Yes. But if your back is sore and you're sick all the time like you were as a child before you found yoga, right? Like, you can't do what you came here to do because you're just spending all your time and energy trying right. to be healthier. Or, Great. You know, right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yoga is... Oh, I'm, I'm so grateful for yoga. I mean, where would your life be right now if you didn't discover yoga? You ever think about that? Uh, <laughs> I couldn't think about that, but if my father was here, I was maybe somewhere in uh, working with my father in the movies because mm -hmm. my father was, uh, he was working in movies oh. in India. Yeah. So maybe somewhere there. But still, I'm glad that uh, I, I miss my father. That doesn't mean yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah. my father. No, of course. But uh, still, God gave me this way. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm still surviving in a different way and a lot of people, my father also maybe is very happy now oh, I'm seeing sure me like he's this. very proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because now what I'm doing is completely, entirely different. Mm -hmm. Maybe even in that path, maybe I cannot do this much. Yeah. It's different. I'm so happy. Yeah. What yeah. I'm doing, I'm really happy. Yeah, yoga, is, it's a very fulfilling way of life, yes, right? Because yes. it feels like you're doing something meaningful, yeah. you know, not just for yourself, but especially when you become a teacher of teachers or, or even of students, you know, it's, you, you're just putting, you're gaining so much good karma, Yes. right? Yes. Imagine, what are we going to be in the next life with all this good karma we're accruing now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not God, because God has a lot of burdens. Yeah. He should save so many people, so we cannot become a god. But maybe, whatever, maybe like an ant or animal, I'm also allowed to expect this. No problem. <laughs> you like to be an ant in your No life. problem. <laughs> I will do my duty that time also and I will leave this place. Oh, uh, you'll do your duty. Yeah, you should give me a lot of strength to next Jarma also. I want to serve yeah. in many things. Yeah, well, ants are very strong, right? Ants are very strong. They carry much more than their own weight and they do work hard. So yes. I could see you being an ant in your next life. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think about that. Um, what's what's coming up for you? So you have more trainings. You have this big festival coming. I mean, you're just expanding, right? I'm more trying to put like last six years my yoga center. Yeah. We are re really did a very spiritual part. We never thought about business. I'm in a big loss. Yeah. Now this year I'm thinking that I should not go loss from now mm -hmm. because now I know about bit about management. Mm -hmm. I want to earn money in a good way yeah. and uh, quality money. 
-hmm. And if I earn that money, I want to do some some things for like good who do not have a, mm -hmm. a source to become a yoga teacher. Uh -huh. I want to really want to teach them. Okay. I want to build a people like who don't have feet, who don't have eyes, who don't mm. have hands. I want to teach them yoga and I want to make them a teacher. Wow. That's an They have heart, focus. they can speak. Yeah. Just they, they don't have physical exercise, no problem because it's not about physical. Right. Yoga is available to yeah. everyone. Everybody. So oh. I saw a guy who do not have two hands here. Yeah. But he's using his mobile phone normally. Yeah. And I felt why couldn't he can not do this? So yeah. I'm planning this in my future. Oh, that's a beautiful vision. Hopefully God gives me a lot of strength. I will do that. I can see you <laughs> being very successful with that. I think that's a beautiful mission you're on. Yeah. yeah. So for, I guess we call um, people handicapped, right? Or disadvantaged yeah. or whatever, but yeah. maybe reframing that. Like yeah. they're not handicapped, right? Yes. They're fully capable of doing yoga, sharing yes. yoga, yes. teaching yoga. Because empowering I, them through I that. I saw a lot of people who, who have handicap, mm -hmm. but they have like strength, unbelievable strength, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. inner strength. Yeah. They can do many things which we have very physical exercise, then also we cannot do hand balance sometimes. Mm -hmm. I saw Dan Nevins who don't have to have two feet, but he can do hand balance very easily. Right. So I feel they have inner strength. Mm -hmm. They are well, not worried yeah. about dying. In, in Asatoma Sadgamaya says, Mrutyo or Ma Amrutangamaya. Right. When Mrutyo comes, you should take like Amruta, like a good water, like Ganga. You should yeah. drink. Sweet nectar. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe after drinking Amruta, you'll get in a good way, you'll go to heaven, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is Mrutyo or Ma Amrutangamaya. Right. And yeah, well, these people that have been through so much adversity, that builds spiritual strength, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Right. And often physical strength in the part of the body that's not affected, right? Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. I love that vision. I'm. I can fully see you. Yeah, I, I need a lot of support, Thanks. but I will. I will be one day there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I. I fully support you on that path. Thank and you I would so much. Love to do anything I can to yeah. support that vision yeah. becoming a reality. I, maybe I'll start very soon with one or two students. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to charge anything. Just I want to teach them yoga and make them a teachers. Yeah. Because it will be a moral, moral support, and a lot of people become their role models. Yeah. They'll become role models exactly. for others. Exactly, exactly. So I want to do this mm. and I want to bring a lot of people to do yoga. Yeah. And you're going to keep everything in China? Any, any no, no, I want to do everywhere. Like okay. Really, I want to spread my yoga things everywhere all over the world. Global. But, yeah. but still, I, I have a center there and I will be keep keep going and coming, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So you'll have the base there, yes. but you want to be all over the world. All over the world. And yeah. go and spread. You know, the sh sharing is not in one place. I should share everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I know you're not into hashtags because you're no. not doing the social media so much, but a hashtag I use a lot on my social media is yoga all over the world. Okay. Because that's something that I'm hashtag, yeah, right? really interested in is yoga all over the world. It's everywhere we can get it into every corner. Everybody in the whole world needs yoga. Okay. So Maybe I will, I will upload the, down, <laughs> the app and I will do this. Yeah, I'll be happy to help you with the social media if you can ever, if you can ever use it outside yeah. of China. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. It's yeah, been really beautiful no finally getting to sit down and uh, it's, it's learn my more pleasure. about I'm you. I'm so happy. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste, namaste. Thanks so much for answering the call to be here today. I'm so glad you're part of our tribe of activated rainbow warriors. If you found the show in any way empowering or inspiring, I would be so grateful if you would share the show on social media or with friends and family that you think would benefit from these conversations. And also, rate and review the show in iTunes. This is really the very best way to help support the show and help us get noticed by others who are looking for the sort of content that we're sharing. Now notice there are no outside ads playing here. That's because the show is supported by you, the listener. You can become a patron of the show with a small monthly donation by checking out the perks on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash visionary lifestyle and signing up there. There's also a one-time donation button on the podcast page of the website, if that suits you better. And just so you know, your donations help to cover the necessary out-of-pocket monthly expenses to produce the show, and will also help us grow so we can inspire and educate even more people. And hey, tribe, I'd love to hear from you. Visit me at visionary-lifestyle.com, and please tell me your comments and questions. I really look forward to connecting with you. I love you. Namaste.